think you started your question, so I had the similar thing. Not only ASEAN, but what about neighboring Bangladesh, Nepal, Bhutan? How does the Seven Sisters fit into the Lukis doctrine, and will Britain benefit from it? Thank you, sir. Thank you for thank you for giving me the opportunity. There were there was of course Manoj Jhaji is from uh, Bihar, and uh, that is also I consider a part of the East. And uh, uh, defense expert has very eloquently spoken about uh, Indo-Pacific uh, the strategic importance of this The lady here, Ms. Khan, she has spoken about economic aspects. And I completely agree. There is one thing which uh, I would like to explain to everyone else. Is that we are talking about India. India is just not a singular entity. India is not about, and when you come to London, we don't expect only to see the Britishers, we see different cultures, we, see different, we taste different cuisine, but India is far bigger than that. So what works for you in, let's say, Hyderabad, I see a lot of people from Telangana here. What works for you in Hyderabad may not work with someone, the state who's from Canton. There are different rules. Uh, what works in Uttar Pradesh need not work in uh, Tamil Nadu. So one has to understand that what are you coming to India and dealing with? Does the future of India lie in these big cities? I think they saturate. <coughs> That's why we have a lady like Angela Raynan who is from Stockholm. And she's probably projected as a leader for the future. We have our honorable uh, former minister and a very Someone I really look up to, Salman Khushid, and he's from Karuka. So I don't think that the idea of India lives in the cities anymore. It did to simplify things, but no, I don't think so. Now here, let's look at it from a strategic point of view. I come from, I'll talk about politics later, because I need to also get back to that. We cannot forget our original profession. But let's talk about strategically. China is a threat. Everybody is saying China is a threat. Where is China a threat? In Uttar Pradesh. No. Is China a threat in Nepal? Absolutely. They are controlling the, the entire influence of China is there. The Chinese influence in Myanmar, which is just next to us. The China coming into Sikkim and the bigger area, taking in territories from Bhutan. China looking at influencing through Asian development banks in Bangladesh. China coming and taking over a port in Sri Lanka. China having a huge amount of influence and blocking India's entry into ASEAN countries. China will not defeat us through military. China will economically starve us. And what are we doing in the Eastern Theatre? You know, England and India have a shared history. We talk about colonialism. I grew up in a school. I studied in a school which was Irish Brothers. We have a well situation in Shalom where 80% of the children have been born. You have uh, Loretto Convent, you go to Darjeeling, you see St. Paul's, both halls. The entire education system in the East was not done by the government of India. It was actually by the British. The health system in many parts of the East have been actually created by the missionaries who are also British. So, to say that just because somebody in uh, Madhya Pradesh is uncomfortable with the idea of British colonialism does not mean that it actually affects us in the Northeast. The Northeast thinks differently. We in the Northeast are actually asking for a separate time zone from the rest of India because we would like to go with the Assam tea time because the sun rises a lot earlier. So, for productivity issues, we want a separate time zone. So, to completely uh, say that India is this and because the national media's obsession and Manoj Jha we would uh, uh, actually uh, the national media's obsession with uh, what is happening in New Delhi or what's happening in Mumbai or what's happening in uh, uh, Bangalore does not mean that a person from Bhagalpur or a person from uh, Tripura or a person from Meghalaya or Mizoram have a lesser life. And the justification that I hear is, 
Oh, but your population is yes. Hmm. I'll give you an example. This election. Can I have a mic? Oh, get in at the mic until it's our standing. Without any kid. So the, the entire obsession. So I'll give you an example of the recent election which happened in Goa. Goa's population is smaller than that of Manipur. But all the national TVs were in Goa. They have lesser am amount of legislative seats, but they were all in Goa. And they cover Goa more than Manipur. So it is not about population. It's about how connected you are with another part of India. I'm very really happy that I'm sharing the stage here with Manu Chaji. My sister is married in Dumrao. We have a long history with uh, Darbanga. And you've, you've actually, you know, there was a time when everybody said, Oh, Bihar, Gunda Raj. Are you to Bihari? You know how much it does to hurt the conscience of an individual in that area? So I would urge Britain, England, you have a deep connection with our part of the world. And kindly do not ignore that. When you talk about trade, trade need not be only manufacturing jets. Our region is pristine with uh, mountains, rivers. Why don't you look at tourism? You will not be able to compete with a Taj or a, or a ITC in Bombay or Delhi. But you could look at tourism in our part of the world. You could look at agriculture. You could look at trade. There is a road from Manipur which goes all the way up to Thailand. Who built that road? It did not pass. It was definitely not within Gatkari. It was General Stilwell. It is still there. These routes need to be explored. <coughs> Linkages to Bangladesh. We all look upon Bangladesh. Some people even call them uh, through different names which I will not say here. Bangladesh's economy is far growing far big, uh, faster than ours. In fact, their, their output is far more than ours. Can we ignore such a big population? Can we identify a population purely on the basis of how they look, what they speak, or which religion they preach? No. So if India needs to actually come up in the global forefront, India will need to get away from this national state politics. Yes, there was a time when we needed to assert ourselves. Shashi Tharoor has done it many times in the British Parliament and North South. But beyond the rhetoric, that has to be productivity. What is that productivity? The productivity is why does, why, why is everyone doing business in China? We can all talk about human rights. We can all talk about lack of democracy. But the ease of doing business is faster there, it's easier there. But when it comes to Britain and India, not only have we inherited our uh, civilization, we have also inherited a deep-rooted bureaucracy which is in India and is in Britain. And that's why the problem I don't see is between the politicians. I see it more between the red tailers and the Jesus. Coming back to our region, uh, now coming back to what Manoj Haji was saying, of course we need people to keep in contact. Of course we need to have a dialogue. We have inherited a constitution which is completely more or less from the British. We, we, we are communicating here today in English. The language which the people in my state, my tribe, we belong to a small tribe, Tiprasa people, very small tribe. But let me proudly say that we lost 1100 soldiers fighting shoulder to shoulder in Myanmar in the Second World War. And we fought along with the British against the Japanese. We did it because we believed in the idea of protecting our people and our land. The Battle of Kohima, the Battle of Manik, Imphal, these have happened and our people have seen and never did once. We are, we are not ungrateful people, we remember that. So I urge all of you all to even explore that part of India where you will not be bowed down by hostilities of the past. India loves uh, a lot of things English. That we, we are today, we trust our people today, are asking for a language to be written in a script which is Latin, Roman, English. 
Because we understand that tomorrow if we have to go and seek opportunities, it is always easier to learn English. Today an Indian has an advantage over the rest of the world, unlike let's say a Chinese or someone from a Latin country, because when they come, they already know the language. We do not come trying to grasp hold of the language. We know the language. Our pronunciation may be slightly off here and there. But the entire IT industry has actually boomed compared to our neighbors is because of a proficiency in English. I've never studied outside. I've never gone to Oxford, Cambridge. I've never studied in Delhi. I've never studied in Bombay, Mumbai. I've studied in Northeast. But I think my English is pretty all right for you all to understand what I'm saying. So education is one another area where I think that you all should look into it. Quality education. Healthcare. You already have a legacy of healthcare in our part of the world. Healthcare is again where uh, Manu Jhanti says people to people contact. What is the biggest contact? Healthcare. Healthcare can move, shape and move wonders in this world. Healthcare is something you should look at. Tourism is something you should look at. Because tourism is not only about building hospitals, sustainable tourism is something you should look at. Energy. Climate change, we all worry about climate change. We are rich in resources. But we do not want to engage in mining. We do not want to engage in coal mining, limestone mining. We do not want to deplete our resources, our nature. So how about looking at green energy? Green energy is something because, again, while Northeast is rich in its rivers, we are bound by only a chicken's neck. Again, someone from Sikkim would be able to understand, let you understand that. A, it's a chicken snake. And while we are resource rich, we need clean energy. Our transmission lines don't come when there is an avalanche or when there is an earthquake or there is a landslide, there rains, storms. We don't have electricity for five, six days. How about having captive, captive power plants? How about having green energy where we do not need to depend on a transmission line? So these are areas that I urge the West, the, Brit the British, the English, should look at that. And please come to our part of the world. I have not, I have not come here to pitch about the rest of India. There are many more capable people here who will pitch about the rest of the country. What I have come here is to pitch about my part of the country. And we love our country. But we want you to explore something where there will be less hostility. There is direct land links. With the Chittagong Hill port, you have a direct port link. And come with English. Come with the land education, come with healthcare, come with tourism, come with green energy, and we will be more than happy to accept you with welcoming arms. We have done it before, and we will do it again. And that is a commitment that we can give you, and this is a commitment which will remain. It has remained for centuries, and it will remain for the decades to come. But you have to take the first step. Well, I come back. Thank you. Since you spoke about your relation, uh, the similarities between India and uh, Britain during the Second World War, we uh, fought in the Eastern Theatre, uh, the northeast of India, with shoulder to shoulder with the British uh, to stop the invading Japanese forces. I'm wondering, uh, since you're from Stockport, and you're from a smaller, like, you're not from London, but you're London. So we also come from a region which is slightly away from the national uh, debate or the spotlight. So I'm wondering, would it make sense if a group of MPs, irrespective of parties, made a visit not only to New Delhi or Bombay or Bangalore, but also to Pandito and visited uh, Northeast, uh, our state of Tripura, Nagaland, uh, Manipur, and also probably even look beyond that because uh, the entire Eastern Theatre, the, the entire connectivity, uh, the still well road which was built by General Silver, is still there, which connects us to the entire Far East and ASEAN countries. So maybe even from uh, reconnecting the old bonds and also looking at new opportunities, 
would it make sense if you all made a visit and put that in the agenda? I think uh, the government of India would welcome you as well, and I think even the state governments across the region would probably welcome you. Would, it, would that be in your uh, uh, outlook as well? I think, I think that's a really important point. And in, in the UK, actually, we've had devolution. We started off with Scotland. It's got their own parliament and powers now. We've got well, the Welsh government that have devolution and their own powers, and they're in power, and they implement things differently. And in the England now, we've got Metro Mayor. So I talked about our great Manchester Mayor, Andy Burnham, and he's got devolved powers. We've got West Yorkshire Mayor, who's just devolved and franchised to Buskers, and they've got much more control at local level now. So I think it's really important that, that we have events and we link up at much more regional and sub-regional level because our economies are different. Your economy is different where you are compared to New Delhi. You know, the, it's, it's completely different around how things operate and how those links can work. So I think there is something, there is a push in the UK politics at the moment because they think that Westminster politics has failed them. You know, there's been a frustration, shall we say, from our population around Westminster politics. And there is a much more sort of push towards localism and about making sure that our regional economies can do well. So I actually think there's something very positive about what you're saying, and I'll take that as an invite and we'll definitely be in touch. But there is, there is something very positive about reaching out beyond the national politics or even the political parties and going right down to the local level, speaking to our metro mayors, speaking to our politicians, whether that's in the Scottish Parliament, whether that's in the Welsh Parliament, because they have their own governments there as well, or whether that's within our regional structures as well. And you'll find that there is a diversity and powers and levers that can bring those relationships more and closer together without the bureaucracy that you may find when you're trying to do it from a central spot downwards. And I think there is a definite push in the UK towards that. Our electorate want more control and power at source where they're at because the, what's happening in Sheffield is completely different to what's happening in London. Their way of life is completely different and one size does not fit all and the UK have recognised that and I think that will become more of a thing in the UK. I don't think even if the Westminster politics wanted to if I became Deputy Prime Minister and wanted to hold everything centrally in a year or two's time, I don't think that would happen because I think that the push is the opposite way. So any politician in the UK that doesn't recognise that, I think would be at their peril. I think the, the um, fashion, the, the mode of transport, the, the direction in which we're going at the moment is towards more regional devolution. So I think those links that we could make are actually very crucial to make them at local levels as well and to reach out. Sometimes it's a lot harder to get that at central level, but actually it can be incredibly fruitful to do it at local levels because local industries within that area and industries within India in pockets where things are, you know, you may have a particular manufacturing in a particular area that actually would link very much with one of our areas in the UK. So I think it's a very, very good idea, very prudent move to do that as well. Thank you very much. Yeah, ladies and gentlemen, a big round of applause.